play Death Magnetics in the in the stores tomorrow. And how does it feel? It feels really good. There's a there's a good good vibe within, and I think that good vibe is is getting out there because <laughs> there's a lot of excitement about the record. A lot of people talking about it, and and I think there's a lot of people that want it to be good. And I'm glad that it is. <laughs> uh, two years writing, you know, it all comes down to this day, you know, and it, it's exciting, you know, we're giving birth <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> I've read a lot of the reviews on, on that's online already, and a lot of them are very positive. But that's what the Washington Post they call the album a midlife crisis. What do you think about <laughs> when you hear stuff like that? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> if, if that's what they think, okay. You know, I I think the older we get, the less we worry about um, maybe public perception or what people think of you. It's There's always going to be people that are going to take shots. That's fine. We're a big, we're a big target <laughs> and have been for a long time. But I think our honesty is a pretty good shield, and and we just we blame it on honesty. This is this is us. This is who it is. Death Magnetic, yeah. ten songs. We'll start with the first one. That was just your life. What can you tell us about that? Most of the albums have some intro tape and you know a mood that's creating, and then all of a sudden, bam, the riff happens. That's what we wanted, and that's what we got on. That was just your life. You know, creepy intro and. You know, we're thinking of live. You know how this how this incorporates with live because you know Metallica and live they go together. And then you go over to uh, the end of the line. Uh, end of the line. End of the line. Uh, 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 uh. I'm trying to remember these songs still. <laughs> we just wrote them. <laughs> this has been two years, but you know, again, that's another one of those songs that has lots of different feels to it, but. You know, highlighted with the bass, broken beat and scarred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was the one we argued a bit about uh, around the title. I, I just felt that that title was too long. Lars was very adamant about that title, uh, so now it's BBS. So <laughs> it shortened. Then the fourth song, uh, that uh, the day that never comes. It was the first single of your record. Yeah, the day that never comes was uh, that was one of about three ballads we were working on. Well, I call it a ballad, but maybe the first few minutes is, and the rest is <laughs> all hell breaks loose. Starting off, you know, with ballady, and then you know, like one, you know, bring it home, you know, and then you've got five minutes of of insanity. Um, that song is a lot of fun to play. And then we're halfway through with All Nightmare Long, which I think is one of my favorites. What can you tell us about this one? It wasn't my favorite. It was so pieced together. You know, the tempos are a little, whoa, hey, ho, ho, ho. And trying to smooth those out into a song. I was really worried about that. But then the more I listened to it, it's like, it's okay. It's okay. And then we have come to Cyanide. Uh, I really enjoy playing that song live. I think that's going to be... Uh, one of the songs that stays in the live set for a long time. And then as number seven, you have a third version of The Unforgiven. Yeah. Unforgiven 3. <laughs> that was that was the one that I had to fight to get on the record. People were not as into it as me, maybe. Maybe it's still part of my trilogy or my journey in life. And lyrically... I think it's it makes sense to me. I think it's very strong, very strong. I think it's, I, I in my opinion, it's the best of the Unforgivens. And then we have uh, the Judas Kiss. Just the word Judas, something, it sang really cool. And I uh, just started working around uh, that word. And the Judas Kiss was what we came up with. And then for the uh, first time in a long time, you have a uh, instrumental, Suicide and Redemption. Right. Yeah, the lyrics were tough for that one. Um, worked a lot on that. <laughs> and then you ended all kind of like on uh, Master of Puppets and Justice for All with uh, 
comparison to Damage Inc. and Dire Sea. It's a really fast song and uh, My Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel it's always pretty good to end with a bang, you know. Uh, and especially the one that has... Mm, there's, there's a real old school riff in there, in the middle. It's like, that's... 1983 right there you know uh, uh it was a kirk riff and it's like dude it, you're still in exodus this is an exodus riff right here so really cool and uh, uh the aggression the speed it just felt when we were playing it it felt like putting on some old boots you know felt good so how would you uh sum up death magnetic well i think it's diverse it's it's a uh, Again, what I wanted to get back to, uh, song or, or you know, running order wise, like Ride the Lightning, like Master of Puppets, you know, not 20 songs. Let's get it down to, you know, a good meal size where you can fit everything on the plate. And, and let's have flavors, different flavors, you know. Instrumental, ballad, fast, long, short, all of those in in one record. And, and I think we've got as close as possible with within uh, the four different band members' opinions on what should be. 